area, but still, yeah. um, you know, sounds like a lot of really great uh, Indian or South Asian influences um, as well. Um, did you ever read Amar Chitrakatha? Was that a, a mainstay in, um, you know, yes. right? Get, getting some of those great Mahabharat stories out there? Those comic books were just incredible. Uh, it's amazing how much we learned from those comic books. One thing is that I grew up around, yes, these animals, the green grass, but also books and imagination. And like so many South Asian and Indian families, my parents made education the center of the household. Um, and so that cultivated a great imagination in me. Um, and one thing that my family did that was very unique uh, was was this, uh, a family court system. So when my mm. parents first immigrated here, they were so proud to be in America. And my mom would always proudly say, this is a democratic household. So when we have a fight in the house, we're gonna solve it by the family court system. So wow. we'd all gather in the kitchen and one person would be a judge and one person would be a lawyer for one side and one person would be a lawyer for the other side. And we'd just argue it out. And I grew up believing that that was normal and years <laughs> later, I became a lawyer and my mom still wonders why. Wow. Well, I mean, that's about as, uh, you know, great of a setup for, for your future as it gets. Um, do you, to this day now, are there things that, you know, you particularly do every day that are, that's uniquely Indian? It's a great question. Yes. Uh, I say the Gayatri Mantra, okay, which very few people know, actually. Right. But uh, when it's a particularly rough moment or I have a big challenge ahead or I'm nervous about something, uh, immediately my mind will go right into that mantra that I learned from home. Uh, it's an incredible meditation. And it's now so many people in the United States are now adopting meditation and mindfulness. And that's something that as an Indian American, I grew up with it right at home. <laughs> 